And before we go on with introductions, we thought we might offer a bit of background about the seminar series, especially for those of you who might be joining us for the first time. The Latin American Anthropology Seminar Series is hosted by the Center for Latin American and Caribbean Studies, CLACS, which is part of the School of Advanced Study, University of London. And the seminar has been running in person for more than a decade and since 2013 at CLACS home in Senate House in London. But last year we moved online for obvious reasons and this has been a great opportunity to include speakers and participants from all over the world, and especially Latin America, who would, we would have been unable to participate and, and join us otherwise. We are currently three conveners who jointly coordinate the seminar. Myself, I know I'm Montoya and I'm based at Clarks. Denise Roman Burgos based at Aberdeen and Jessica Sclair at Cambridge. And the seminar is thought as a forum for early career anthropologists and other scholars using ethnography in their research in Latin America to present their work in progress. But we like to kick off the year by inviting a more established scholar to share their work, hence our invitation to Gabriela. The seminar runs fortnightly on Thursdays at 5 p.m. UK time. So our next session will be on 11th November. And we're gonna post the details of it in the chat. The full program is also available already on CLAC's website. Um, so please do join us for other sessions as well. And I should also mention that today's session has been kindly spos sponsored by the Society for Latin American Studies, which has allowed us to use their own gather space after the seminar for a more informal chat and for a virtual drink with Gabriela Zamorano. So please do join us for that as well. If you have the time, we will be posting the link also in the chat. And before we hear from Gabriela, I'm going to pass over to Denise, who will say a few words about how we are organizing this evening's session. So over to you, Denise. Thank you, Ainoa. Okay. Um, so I'm delighted to introduce our speaker for today's session, Gabriela Zamorano. She is a professor and researcher at the Center for Anthropological Studies at El Colegio de Michoacán in Mexico. After having received her PhD from the Anthropology Department of the City University of New York in 2008, she conducted postdoctoral research on racial photography in Bolivia at the Musée du Quai Branly in Paris in 2009. Her work analyzes the intersections between political anthropology and visual economics, principally in Mexico and Bolivia. She is the author of Indigenous Media and Political Imaginaries in Contemporary Bolivia and the author of Ethnographies of On-Demand Films, Anthropological Explorations of Commissioned Audiovisual Productions with Alex Valiati. And uh, she is also co-author uh, of The Frente al Perfil, Retratos Raciales de Frederick Starr uh, with Deborah Poole, uh, among many other articles and book chapters published in Latin America, the US and Europe. Her research has been funded by the National Science Foundation and the National Council for Science and Technology in Mexico. Her current research includes work of popular photographic and audiovisual archives in Michoacán, Mexico, and the direction of a documentary film project on the photographic archives of Bolivian photographer Julio Cordero. Gabriela's talk is entitled Indigeneity, Race and the Media from the Perspective of the 2019 Political Crisis in Bolivia. Uh, she will be speaking for 45 minutes and then we will open it up uh, for a Q&A. And we aim to finish around 6.30. After that, we will move to the SLAS Gather Space, as I know I mentioned. And if you'd like to ask a question, please use the raise hand function uh, available on this platform. And I will ask you to unmute and ask your question. Uh, 
or if you prefer, you can also post your questions in the chat box and then I will read those out. Um, as I know I mentioned, we are recording Gabriela's talk and we will post it later on the Quax website, but we are not recording the Q&A. And now uh, the floor is yours, Gabby. Thank you very much, uh, Denise and Noah and Jesse for inviting me to this, uh, to this session. I'm very excited to participate and to share this work and uh, discuss with you about this, this topic. So um, I, will, I will start now and you know, I will be happy to, to have the further discussion later. Um, I will share a screen. <clears throat> a few minutes before five o'clock on the afternoon of Sunday, November 10th, 2019, Bolivian TV news reporters interrupted the repetitive and breathless coverage of the events that for the past 20 days had marked the, po the post-electoral crisis of the country to broadcast its culminating moment. Embargo, tengo la obligación de buscar esta paz. Duele mucho que entre bolivianos y bolivianos enfrentados, duele mucho que esos señores, algunos cometes cívicos y partidos que han perdido, llevar a la violencia, llevar a la agresión, enfrentando entre bolivianos y bolivianos. Y por eso y muchas razones estoy denunciando, enviando mi carta de denuncia a la Asamblea Legislativa Plurinacional de Bolivia. Muchas gracias. While President Evo Morales and his Vice President Álvaro García Linera delivered their resignation speeches, TV news channels were simultaneously broadcasting images like this. Note that they are uh, this flag that these people took off, these uh, 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 police officers and other people took off from the national, the, the government palace and uh, brought to the street to burn it is uh, the Wipala, which is a uh, which became an official national symbol uh, alongside with the uh, uh, Republican tricolor since the foundation of the plurinational state in, in 2010. And it basically represents the coexistent of different indigenous nationalities in the country. Together with this kind of images, we could see images like this. Y estas imágenes son las que se reflejan donde la gente todavía se encuentra. Seguimos informando desde Santa Cruz, son las 24 y vamos a mostrarles estas imágenes. Marco Pumari y Luis Fernando Camacho en el interior de Palacio Quemado con la bandera boliviana, con la Biblia y con la carta que llevaron con la intención de entregarle al presidente Evo Morales. Esta es la primera imagen fotográfica que se conoce de los líderes cívicos de Potosí y Santa Cruz. So all of this is happening at the very same, same moment, sometimes in uh, screens sharing frames of all these different moments, no? Um, just also to put in context, 
uh, the, the people we see here uh, is basically Luis Fernando Camacho in the middle, who, was, uh, who is a right-wing activist and chair of the Civic Committee of Santa Cruz. Uh, uh, he, he later ran for president as well, and he, 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 uh, he was very important for, for all, during all this, uh, uh, um, he was very prominent, his figure became very, very prominent during this political crisis. We see on the side with the, the black jacket, Marco Antonio Pumari, he's an indigenous miner, from Potosí, and uh, uh, he's a representative of, a, he's a union, uh, he's a miners union leader and representative of the Civic Committee of Potosí. Just to, to try to, <laughs> to identify uh, actors here, Civic Committees are usually uh, 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 committees that were confirmed a while ago and that are aligned to the right forces of the country. No? Um, so these three are just a few of the many images circulating in all available media in Bolivia and worldwide about the post-electoral crisis of 2019. Uh, they were, of course, uh, broadcasted in, in, in television, but also uh, circulated and recirculated and uh, in, uh, uh, mounted and remounted in, uh, in social media and digital media. No? Uh, just to put in context a little bit of this very confusing moment for many, uh, I think everybody who was with us in this moment was very confused. Uh, um, I, I would just like to, to, to list some points to, to characterize what was going on in this crisis. First of all, we had, um, although Evo Morales uh, uh, had won in the first uh, in his first mandates uh, with a lot of uh, uh, with big ma ma majorities. He, by this time, he already had lost a lot of le legitimacy, uh, mainly among, among uh, urban middle class sectors because of his insistence on running for president after having been third for, in power for over 13 years. You know? He had been uh, running already for three presidential terms. Uh, on the election day, on October 20th, uh, the vote counting was showing very tight results between Morales and his main opponent, Carlos Mesa, who is not really a a, a very a, 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 a right-wing representative, he's more neutral. Um, and suddenly at night, we know this history very well in Latin America, and suddenly at night, uh, uh, um, there was a, 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 a they, they stopped broadcasting the, the, the boat counting, and suddenly there was a break in boat, in, uh, in boat trends that favored Morales. So after that, there was a big suspicion of fraud and uh, Morales' opponents, start, uh, mainly in, in, in urban areas, started to take to the streets. Uh, and this is where this big movement started, no? this movement that finally, after 20 days, led to, the, to, Evo's, to Evo Morales' resignation. So uh, among all this deception, and uh, people were really, a lot of people were very upset, mainly in urban sectors. So, uh, um, in this context, right uh, sectors that had lost a lot of strength during Morales governments and during the period of the na plurinational uh, state, uh, they became very active through figures like Luis Fernando Camacho and uh, civic unions and youth civic movements that uh, had been very active, for example, opposing the constituent assembly process in 2008 and nine. So these, these groups, these, these kind of actors, gained prominence and popularity by joining the claims for democracy. Uh, uh, they started to lead movements, to organize assemblies, public assemblies. Uh, they, they joined block blockades in cities, etc. cetera. And um, they, they finally gained a lot of force. Um, two days after Morales resigned, and his, uh, Morales and his whole team resigned, Janine Añez, who was a parliament oppositional representative, and she was substitute of the president of the Senate. She was not even the president of the Senate, but since the president of the Senate uh, had also resigned and threatened, and been threatened, so um, uh, Janine Añez uh, proclaimed herself as the new president two days after, the, after Morales resigned. Um, this was, of course, not an individual decision, but a very well-planned strategy of the right to take over the government. And, and well, this is where the, the whole controversy about the coup started, no? uh, because there was actual discontent, actual popular discontent, and 
uh, critique of Morales' uh, uh, persistence in the government, but uh, there are also very well planned actions from the right that culminated, culminated in uh, Añez's uh, 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 mandate. Um, well, many of you know the story. After about one year that she remained in power, uh, finally, uh, the, uh, there was a new electoral uh, uh, journey and uh, MAS, the, the government, the, the party of Morales, uh, returned to power and, and is now governing Bolivia. Um, well, so now it's it's hard to make sense of why symbols like flags, I think that that's a question that we'll make, no? Why symbols like flags or a Bible become the center of disputes and become so meaningful in moments, especially like this, where there is a lot of polar polarization, when the, where there is a, a, a lot of emotion also, and a lot of a, 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 a violence in the streets, no? You can feel in the image, in the videos and images, um, some texture in sounds, in voices, in, in the very register of images. Uh, and that's what uh, most people following the conflict were exposed to for almost a whole month. Uh, many people were uh, following events, awaiting for news through these kinds of images. No? Of course, many people were also on the street, but many people were uh, 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 really stick to the, to the screens to follow what was going on. These fleeting yet powerful images uh, are superimposed onto confronting symbol, uh, symbolic spheres that in many ways summarize and reorganize key aspects of this conflict and more broadly of the history of Bolivia. And I'm, I'm going to uh, 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 go more slowly through them, but one, um, one aspect of this con conflict is a negation of the principal emblem of the plurinational project that represents the uh, recent constitutional achievements of the indigenous peoples. Uh, second, uh, the explicit restitution of Catholic symbols in official institutions by leaders of the right, who to the surprise of many, gained prominence during the post-electoral crisis. And three, um, um, among all the quarrels between various, various groups and protagonists of this crisis, there is something that stands out and that really called my attention when looking at these images on a daily basis. And it was uh, the, negoci the negotiations of race and gender that are likewise rooted in histories and conflicts that go really way back. No? So um, I, I propose through this analysis that I'm going to develop here with you, uh, first, that television and digital media are not only uh, do not only broadcast, but visually produce, dispute, and rearticulate national political narratives in very interesting ways. And uh, through uh, uh, the practices of many, uh, many, many actors, not only those who, 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 who are involved in media production. No? Um, I also propose to reflect on that political moment through representations, reconfigurations, and discussions on indigeneity and, right, and race, principally in audiovisual and digital media. So what I propose to look at in this analysis that I'm gonna present is first, um, uh, the representations of indigeneity and national unity in memes and other types of images that are spread on social media by organizations that claim to defend democracy and by sectors of the right. And how many times these two uh, really uh, merge together. No? Uh, second, I analyzed the dichotomous ways in which multitudes and episodes of violence were represented by the two main signs in the conflict such as the references to mobs and arts versus civic movements and resistance, respectively. And third, I look at examples of promotional materials that the Agnes government, once it, it already established itself, uh, uh, that this government developed since its inauguration in order to reflect on the ways in which this project, uh, in which these images project certain images of the permitted Indian for the project of nation that the sector represented by, by, by her government was outlining. No? Uh, I will briefly mention uh, something about the, uh, my methodology. First of all, I depart uh, uh, of the idea that all this material that we see in social media, uh, that we uh, uh, repost in social media, 
and that we circulate, that we find, um, and that we intervene. Uh, all this material I consider as uh, digital visual archives, which are in constant uh, 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 intervention, under constant intervention. So uh, from this image, from these visual archives, I select a, a series of images that I collected online while following the political events during the crisis. And I was try, trying um, to, to, to see which of them per, were perturbing in some way to me, uh, and which of them directed me to previous historical tensions in terms of race and ethnic struggles, um, gender and ind indigeneity more broadly. Uh, I observe and describe uh, these uh, pieces as images, but I also observe they are uh, uh, and monitor, let's say, they are forms of circulation, the way they become juxtaposed, reused, uh, remounted. No? I find connections, contradictions, dichotomies, and new uses. For example, how uh, some images refer to a broader idea of the permitted Indian, how some, um, some uh, narratives built through these images uh, 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 speak to the idea of democracy as a civilized and organized and rational movement versus indigenous insurrection as barbarian, irrational, etc. I then establish connections between these images and their uses, mainly around three political moments, three different political moments, which are related in a way to, to previous work that I've done on indigeneity and visuality in Bolivia. Um, and these moments are, well, uh, the 2019 electoral crisis and Nevo's resignation, uh, the 2008 and 9 uh, process of the Constituent Assembly and the proclamation of Bolivia as a plurinational state. This is when, for example, the Huipala became also an official, uh, an official uh, symbol, but also uh, where the annual constitution was, was written. No? Uh, and I also look uh, 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 briefly, or you know, like like a, like a backstage, the early twentieth century um, early twentieth century discussions around the Indian problem that we all had throughout Latin America, discussions about how to include the Indian in the nation, and um, how race was really playing a very uh, strong uh, the, the discourse and the uh, and the imaginaries of race were really playing a strong uh, uh, role in performing this relationship between indigenous peoples and nations. No? Um, so I, I will start briefly um, by asking a little bit of what was st at stake when taking down and burning the Wipala flag? Who was, who was being um, addressed or engaged in this, in this, in this moment? No? Um, well, uh, the, this is also a little bit of context. Um, uh, the, pluri, um, the plurinational uh, state uh, uh, was proclaimed after a one-year process of constituent assembly in which indigenous representatives from uh, different, from all regions of, of Bolivia, but also uh, a lot of organizations and unions uh, uh, participated to, to write a new constitution with a very strong uh, uh, participation of, of uh, you know, that this new constitution was really uh, 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 one of the strongest in Latin America in terms of including the participation of indigenous peoples and, and uh, claims for self-determination. Self um, for many, this, this process, the, 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 the plurinational state and the constituent assembly, were really beyond the victory of Morales and the Movimiento Socialismo. Uh, uh, this resulted from a wider struggle with much different historical roots by indigenous movements and uh, unions, uh, workers' unions and all that uh, in, uh, in Bolivia throughout the 20th century. No? Um, um, this, um, this process, the pro-national process, involved the acknowledgement of indigenous peoples now seen as nations who inhabit the Bolivian territory, uh, that um, their participation goes beyond their cultural and folkloric characteristics. This means uh, going beyond a multicultural state 
to explicitly, explicitly recognize processes of self-determination as well as collective and territorial rights. Of course, this was <laughs> this definition in the in, 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 in this statement in the in the constitution was already was at the same time uh, contradicting the definition of a unitary plurinational state, which uh, 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 was advocated by representatives of the Movimiento al Socialismo and involved maintaining the conception of the state as a centralizing entity, as a unitary state. And that generated a lot of tensions between uh, the, what was written in the law, what was written in the constitution, such as the defense of territory, and the implementation of extractivist and infrastructure policies uh, by, the, by, by the Morales government. For example, this brought all this conflict that you might have heard about uh, around the Tipnis uh, region and the, the road that uh, Morales wanted to build in the middle of uh, an Amazonian territory. Um, at the same time, um, uh, well, plurinationalism then became an official institutional concept. Uh, in a way, uh, when Andrew Canessa is talking about indigeneity as a possible hegemonic language in Bolivia, uh, this is what, what it really became, no? uh, 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 through the, the notion of plurinationalism, indigeneity became a, an hegemonic uh, language in Bolivia, but also re, uh, left outside a lot of uh, 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 indigenous uh, 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 peoples and regions, and of course, people who were uh, making some kind of criticism against Morales' uh, uh, government. Uh, this process at the same, at the same time uh, became very tangible or materialized in, um, for example, the indigenous, indigenization of governmental institutions. And here you had this unthinkable uh, 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 images like people dressing indigenous uh, 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 clothing uh, and uh, 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 chewing coca leaves and speaking their indigenous languages within uh, governmental, uh, uh, within the parliament, for example. No? Um, um, uh, you, had, you had also like um, the institution of civ uh, civic parades every year to commemorate the, the the plurinational state every uh, August 6th. Uh, and these parades were like official parades, like the ones we're used to. Uh, but uh, uh, people who were parading were indigenous peoples who came, or, and miners and uh, 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 workers' unions that came from all different places of the world. And they were marching together with, with the army. So th those were like this kind of very challenging uh, 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 performative instances in, we, in which you could see this indigenization of governmental institutions. No? At the same time, at a more, more popular level, uh, well, um, you had all these um, uh, uh, buildings, this uh, 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 architecture and institutional, like building museums and all that uh, ordered by Morales. For example, this is La Casa del Pueblo, uh, which he said uh, was uh, really challenging uh, uh, conventional, uh, and colonial institutions, um, architecture. And uh, this is inside the Casa del Pueblo. This is a very large building right in the middle of, of uh, uh, La Paz downtown. And you, you, had, you had this kind of uh, indigenous or so-called indigenous art uh, um, uh, validated uh, in, through these kind of uh, 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 buildings. Uh, you had also uh, El Museo de Orinoca, which is um, a museum that Evo created in his birth town uh, and uh, which uh, puts together all the gifts that he received from, from you know, uh, people and indigenous people from different places of the, world, of the world. And here, for example, you see uh, the, the battles that he received from the indigenous authorities from all over the world. No? And at the same time, beyond this institutional level, uh, oh, well, you, you had, for example, in film production, uh, uh, Jorge San Ginés, who was this very prominent uh, militant filmmaker uh, from Bolivia. Well, he, he started producing films uh, using these meta narratives of uh, um, state meta narratives and uh, trying to rebuild history, to, 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 re to organize different narratives of history, which included uh, uh, indigenous 
heroes and leaders. Uh, so, yeah. And at the popular level, you had also this uh, um, um, stronger presence of um, uh, indigenous or um, urban indigenous uh, 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 expressions, such as the Neandian uh, uh, architecture, which has become very popular in an alto and, and is becoming really, uh, you know, a, a phenomenon that many people are talking about around the world. And um, you had expressions that were already taking place, like the uh, uh, Fiestas del Gran Poder, but that became much more visible and that in many ways, this kind of aesthetics are challenging uh, in, in conventional elite uh, aesthetics. Uh, of course, this, this, these people who participate in, in Gran Poder are uh, um, mostly uh, people of Aymara descent who now live in, in some neighborhoods in the, in the, in the city and who uh, um, uh, have, become, have obtained a, a lot of uh, economic and political prominence in, 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 in the country. No? They are becoming like other kinds of, of elites. No? So um, at the same time, when we have all this institutionalization and somehow popularization of indigeneity, uh, we have very strong criticisms um, uh, to Morales and to, to, to his government. For example, uh, and, and these criticisms are made by uh, intellectuals, feminists, etc. cetera. Uh, and uh, for example, Silvia Rivera Cusicanqui said uh, uh, that Evo, and I quote, is the facade of the Indian. He has usurped the symbolic added value of all the social struggles. Uh, other uh, um, intellectuals like uh, uh, Maria Galindo, a feminist, uh, said, uh, has insisted since Evo arrived to the power that he has been reproducing, reproducing, reproducing uh, uh, patriarchal, patriarchal nationalism and many coincide that he really eroded the idea of plurinationality. So just to mention that uh, um, uh, how uh, indigeneity became an institution and at the same time, uh, there, there have been a lot of criticisms that not, not, uh, do not only come from the right, let's say. And this is why it's so uh, complicated to, uh, uh, to, to explain this specific moment. Well, uh, now that I uh, uh, showed some of the Hi, hello. images. Good morning. Sorry? Good morning. Oh. Now that I showed some of the images uh, that uh, became uh, normalized, let's say during the during the pre-national state, I would like to 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 show some of the images that are subverting what was already produced uh, 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 during the post-electoral crisis. So we have, for example, Camacho. This. Uh, this uh, actor who became very prominent during the crisis, uh, he, he is making this kind, of, this kind of public performances and public alliances with uh, indigenous actors at different levels. No? Uh, so we have memes like this one, where he, he went to, 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 to salute a, a group of uh, coca, uh, uh, coca uh, uh, leaf uh, grower, coca, coca leaf producers uh, who opposed Morales. So he went to, ma to make some kind of alliance with them. Uh, so uh, they, uh, they took these pictures and they started to, to circulate and to, to reproduce them like through these kind of illustrations uh, where, uh, you know, many, many women said that Camacho was very handsome. So they say like, well, if this is racism and discrimination, then I want to be discriminated as well. So this kind of humor that goes through and that uh, uh, um, yeah, permeates a lot of uh, uh, Facebook sites and all that. No? Um, we have him uh, also making pacts with uh, indigenous actors. We were really uh, against Morales, like this Rafael Quispe. Uh, and uh, of course, he made this very important alliance with, uh, with uh, Marco Antonio Pumari, this miner that we saw in the pictures at the beginning, and who later became uh, uh, like uh, uh, his, the, the candidate for vice president during a campaign 
during, during Camacho's campaign to run for president. And um, it's very interesting to see this image, for example, of Camacho with Pumari. Um, their party was uh, Creemos. And um, there we see Camacho, like a white, white and Camacho. No? He, he's already uh, dressing differently than, than how he appeared in previous in previous images, he's he's really white, and and uh, uh, the the they are, they are images are more or less becoming symbiotic now. Um, so I'm trying to see how this kind of images of uh, right wings and representatives making alliances with specific Indians are kind of uh, uh, modeling uh, uh, an image of the per which which Indian which kind which kind of an Indian is permitted in this new pro new national project now. Here we have Camacho uh, kind of excusing himself, although he, he was not the one who, who took the Iwipala down, but he, he appeared a, a, few, a few days after all this Iwipala episode, which really uh, uh, um, resulted into a lot of confrontation because people who were uh, supporting Morales went to the streets and to, to, to shout for, the, for, for this, for this uh, to, to, against this act of burning this, this national symbol. Uh, so uh, Camacho appeared on TV on a, on, a, on a video he produced, explaining that the Huipala indeed was as any other regional flag of Bolivia. So he's not, he's not acknowledged, uh, acknowledging it as an official symbol, but he's saying, well, it is as valid as the flag from Santa Cruz or from any other region. No? Um, at the same time, we see all these illustrations and memes that uh, are representing, are creating new ideas of union of Bolivia, uh, a Bolivia, uh, a country that is really clean from conflict, a, 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 a country united. And in these representations, we don't see anymore the 36 nationality, indigenous nationalities, but we go back to representations of uh, um, uh, states or departments, no? Uh, um, and at the same time, we see uh, this emphasis on bringing together the two Bolivias. Uh, as many of you might know, um, um, there, there is this historical uh, regional country, uh, regional conflict in Bolivia between the, uh, the highlands and the, and the, and the lowlands and the Oriente. Uh, so uh, they called um, the lowlands uh, uh, the uh, Media Luna, the half moon, and they were, uh, you know, right sectors are mainly have a strong presence in that region. So by saying uh, we don't have a, a, a half a moon, but we have a full moon, let's go together, Bolivia, and, uh, you know, these uh, uh, characters uh, uh, bringing clothes from those two different regions is like we are together again. There is no difference, there is no historical difference, there is no historical tension. No? On the other hand, the kind of images that we see circulating uh, during this crisis um, um, is um, how multitudes become ra racialized. No? On the one hand, we have all this talking and images of um, uh, this idea of la turba or the mob or la horda, the horde, the horde that is obviously rational, by, irrational, violent, uh, and, and wants to destruct everything. That's, I think, a very clear character, characterization that we know in, in many other uh, 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 political contexts. So the, the mob, the, the turba, the horda, uh, was uh, these movements, uh, 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 um, these movements uh, uh, of uh, people uh, uh, supporting Morales, no? Those were characterized as the, the, the order, no? And in opposition to this, we have the idea of resistencia or um, resisting fa citizens fighting for democracy. And we see, for example, this video, this video clip that a singer from Cochabamba uh, produced, uh, uh, kind of honoring the struggle of this civic movement uh, 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 of Cochabamba, which is really this, this group of uh, almost paramilitary <laughs> youths uh, in, their motor, in their motorcycles, very violent, and he's kind of uh, 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 honoring them as the, the real fighters for democracy and for, 
and the real people fighting and resisting. So I will put a little, uh, I will play a little bit this this video clip just to give an idea of what is at stake here. <laughs> Se mostró resistente al mostrar todo ese valor, la calle y mi bandera y la mente. Caballeros de la libertad, protegiendo a toda la ciudad. En la puerta mi madre dijo adiós, lucha por la libertad de tu pueblo. Y al volver el amo porque lo atrás, solo una verde pañoleta se ha devuelto. Resistencia. I'm sorry to cut it. I know you're enjoying it. But <laughs> Uh, so well, yeah, you, we have here. Uh, it's it's very interesting how it is this kind of images in a very video clip aesthetic aesthetics uh, and kind of in a rock uh, aesthetics as well. But playing a ballad, I don't know. It's it's a very strange uh, 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 subversion of some symbols. But these kind of images were really engaging for youth. Youth was. Uh, youth, urban youths were very, very active in this movement, and these are very engaging images, I think, for them. No? Uh, uh, this idea of going to the streets, of taking down uh, dictatorship or fighting for democracy uh, 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 are, are really appealing, and, and I think that uh, this video clip is very well achieved in that sense. No? There are other moments, uh, uh, well, I didn't prepare for that, that's a part, but... There are other parts in the video, you can look at it later, I can pass you the, 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 the link. But there are other parts in which they show real um, shooting of, uh, you know, um, um, uh, people demonstrating in the streets and all that. No? And even interacting with uh, uh, Indians, no? which interactions with uh, between you know, middle classes, these middle classes uh, protesters and Indians were really, really violent and really racist. And, and you see very kind interactions of the, uh, 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 to kind of vindicate uh, those other images that were circulating also. So, well, um, on the other hand, and just, just uh, now to start closing uh, 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 the, the presentation, we have all this campaign by uh, Janine Añez, who was running for president. Let's remember she was an interim president. So she was uh, also running for president for another party called Juntos. So she, she's trying to really um, um, demonstrate possibilities of union, of bringing peace back, uh, to reconstruct the house, literally, as this video will show us. Uh, and again, there is this, this tendency to, uh, to present racial and class differences as erased, as, as completely erased, and there is only the idea of collaboration emphasized here. So let's see this brief of his promotional campaign, his, oh, sorry, his presidential campaign. Había que poner la casa en orden, y mientras otros voltearon la mirada, nosotros enfrentamos el reto. Juntos. Levantamos y acomodamos el desorden, enderezamos los cuadros y recogimos cientos de vidrios rotos. Hoy Bolivia está en orden y en paz. No fue sencillo, era una tarea dura y al asumirla entendimos su verdadera dimensión. Nuestra casa necesita mucho más que eso, mucho más de lo que pensábamos. 
es una nueva construcción, una nueva manera de relacionarnos. Olvidemos el uno contra otros y trabajemos unos con otros. Mi compromiso es con Bolivia y con los bolivianos. No tengo más compromisos que ese. Poner mi alma y mi corazón como lo han hecho ustedes, con valentía y fortaleza. Es una nueva Bolivia. Es tu casa, la casa de todos. Y yo estoy dispuesta a hacerlo si lo hacemos juntos. So we, we have this, I think uh, for those who speak Spanish, this is very eloquent, how let's get together, let's erase conflict, uh, we are together reconstructing the house. No? Um, and at the same time, Agnes is, well, this, this is a very interesting uh, 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 piece. I analyze it more in detail in, in, in the paper that I wrote and uh, that I can share with you. But uh, this is a very interesting piece in terms of, uh, you know, whitening actors, all different, this is uh, actors uh, of his team, who, of her team, who are uh, representing some kind of the diversity in the country, different skin colors and all that. But at the same time, uh, uh, um, there is no racial tension, no? even with indigenous, with, uh, I, I focus especially in this, in this, in this woman, indigenous woman, uh, who is really smiling at her, and it's this, this attempt to, to demonstrate that uh, everything is consigned, that there is no more conflict, no, no, no racial conflict, uh, uh, that, that uh, contrary to what we saw in the streets uh, uh, on a daily basis. No? Um, and on the other hand, we have, um, uh, for example, this event that Yanina Nez uh, organized to, um, to, to, Vindicate the Chola, uh, this uh, woman of indigenous origin or indigenous women uh, living in cities uh, and considering these very popular classes uh, uh, in the cities, in markets, and all that, and um, vindicating this woman as a national emblem. Uh, indeed, there is a, a very complex historical ambiguity of this category. Uh, so, um, the, the, the cholas that she invited to, 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 for this event are the famous catwalk cholas uh, who, who are participating in, in fashion events internationally. And um, at, at the moment that she's acknowledging the chola and uh, you know this, 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 this actor who, who is uh, representing Bolivia's uh, uh, diversity in a way, but at the same time, uh, she's developing all this, uh, 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 she's uh, underseeing all these women who, who are opposing her government and who are really political and who are as well cholas. Well, she's uh, what, what uh, uh, Yola Mamani, a, a, a feminist uh, uh, activist, uh, very, she's very interesting, she's also chola. She says uh, what, what Agnes is doing is uh, that she's trying to improve the status of women and fight the discrimination on the grounds of race, work, and gender. No? Uh, Mamani also says that uh, this is a false focus on gender in order to, and I quote her, whitewash the racism of her government and make it seem as if, uh, as if she's humble and of the people. No? So this is the kind of uh, performative uh, um, uh, 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 strategies that uh, were developed during her government and after the crisis in order to, uh, and by different actors of, of, of her sector in order to, 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 to create a different uh, image and a different image uh, of alliances and relationships with, with indigenous peoples who were <laughs> taking over the streets all the time uh, while we saw these images circulating in their uh, uh, websites. Well, I'm gonna just close. Um, so uh, I'm going to read this part. Um, from the, from the post-electoral crisis up to the recent um, pandemic of quarantine, a large part of Bolivia's population was not able to engage in a normal working, economically, and socially active life. For many, the lockdown started at least partially in October uh, 2019, while during many months, the, process, the presence of the military and the police on the streets and the roads became part of daily life. 
If before these events, the media, including re radio, television, and digital platforms, already played an important part in people's lives, mainly those who live in the cities, to varying extents and with different degrees of access across the country, digital, digital plat platforms uh, have been a main source of information and vehicle for engaging socially and politically with the rest of the country and with the world at large. Faced with the fact that our relationship with reality is increasingly mediated through screens and other communicational resources, uh, in these presentations, I have proposed a reflection on where these images we consume are coming from and how they reach us, and how they relate to specific political projects and processes, and on how they reproduce, recreate, us or subvert the current political horizons, which are historically marked by class, uh, race, and gender in complex histories. So that's it. I will stop sharing the screen. Thank you very much, Gabi, for this very interesting and thought-provoking presentation. Um, it, it really uh, came together with all the videos uh, and the images and memes, uh, etc. 